Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail. This game is by Mariposa's Games. It plays one to four players. It takes roughly about an hour to an hour and a half to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Trailblazer, you're going to be blazing a trail across the John Muir Trail. Now, you're going to be starting in Yosemite National Park, and you'll be moving all the way down to Sequoia National Park, visiting all the different national parks and wilderness areas going across the trail. Now, your objective is, of course, to reach, reach Whitney Portal, the summit. And if you can do that before the end of the game, it'll allow you to score points, victory points, which you're going to be getting based on what you've got in your backpack, how far across the, your, the track your tent made it, or whether you made it across this trail here. There's cards that you're going to be gathering, these little wilderness cards with different types of creatures or critters and different types of trees and whatnot. They'll score you points as far as that collection goes. And of course, location cards that you can go ahead and visit as long as you're able to pay for the costs. And you'll tally up all those points you acquire throughout the game, and plus additional victory points you can get from unique objectives in the game, and if you have the most, you're the winner. This game is essentially a worker placement Euro style game in which you're going to be taking out your different little uh, boot tokens, utilizing them on different spaces of the board, and moving across over 12 days. If you can reach the end and score the most points after those 12 days, you're the winner of the game Trailblazer, which we'll talk about right now in my review. Okay, so let's talk about Trailblazer. And the first thing is, this game is basically a worker placement game. And it starts off with your own player board. You're going to have your own unique backpack. You're going to have little boots, which I just call workers, as well as resources and personal resources. There's two different types of resources. Basically, you have your uh, water and fire and wind. And then you've got like your personal, which is like food and water and like, I don't know whether you're tired or not. And you'll be utilizing these to get cards. Uh, there's different types of cards in the game. You're going to have like field cards and trail cards and location cards. Uh, these cards here will use, be used at the beginning of the game. You'll be like basically playing one of them of the three or four in your hand and scoring each of the objectives on the sides of the cards, uh, which is really nice. Now, the first thing is whenever you get a symbol on one of your cards, you either purchased or played, you're going to put it in your backpack from left to right, uh, from bottom to top, and you'll be moving up this track on your backpack that will score you victory points for each. Uh, for if you get the whole thing filled out. And it's also going to allow you to uh, gain unique benefits or bonuses as you fill it up. And if you already have the symbol when you play it, you're going to instead move your marker across this uh, camping trail uh, track. That's going to get you additional workers. It'll get you unique objectives that you can score at the end of the game. And if you can get all the way to the end, it's going to get you additional victory points. Uh, the way around works pretty simply is you'll play out a weather tile, one of these guys here, and it'll basically increase the cost of the trail, um, or it's just going to symbolize around. Uh, then you're going to basically be drawing one of these cards here in addition to the ones you already have in your hand. You'll play one, you'll gather the resources based on the one you've played. Uh, then you're going to move on to the worker placement aspect, uh, where you play a, a, a boot, I play a boot, so on and so forth. And the first player is the one who has the trailblazer bla marker, this little guy here. This thing will symbolize you will start and you'll play until everybody has run out of boots and once everybody runs out of boots that will symbolize the end phase in which case everybody's gonna have to pay one food and one water or if you don't have a water you can use two of these a water bottle you can use two of these water symbols instead uh, you'll be adding cards back to the trail. You'll be taking your boots back. Uh, basically, the cleanup phase will occur. And then you'll check to see if it's the end of the, uh, of, of the game. Obviously, if it's the end of the game, you're not going to go through all the steps except for food and drink. And you'll score points based on how many you already have on the board, based on cards you've gotten, as well as any end of game victory conditions, which are going to be mainly these guys here, as well as set collection bonuses for these uh, field guide cards here. And you're basically trying to create unique sets of these colors here. And uh, that's that's kind of the idea of the game. Uh, what I really like about this game is there's a mixture of different things to choose from. You can either choose to gather the basic resources in the game, and you can do that at the very beginning, or you can gather personal resources. Remember, you need those personal resources in order to feed yourself. And if you can never pay for a cost, then you're gonna have to take one of these condition cards or tokens. And these tokens are gonna give you negative points at the end of the game. And you're gonna only be able to gather your, your personal resources at about around four, maybe five, when you get to the fourth area on the trail here, or if you fill your backpack high enough. So you're kind of utilizing what you have and the cards you're able to utilize as you go on. Um, I also like the fact that you have not only just set collections from the birds and the different like critters and the trees that you can gather at the bottom of the board there, so you're trying to complete unique sets of cards, as well as the fact that they give you a resource or victory points, as well as a unique symbol to put into your backpack. But 
You can also have these location cards, which will change as somebody moves across this map here. The farther they get, the higher, the more advanced cards you have. These are the red ones, which means if you've gone far enough on the map, you're going to be able to utilize these ones. They cost more, but they give you more victory points, and they're gonna give you a unique bonus objective on your board, and they're gonna give you a unique backpack item, which can either move your tent if you already have it on your board, or you can place it on your board if you have it already. Uh, your main objective in the game is to go through the trail and get to Mount Whitney, right? And if you can make it all the way to Mount Whitney, then that's going to solidify you to win the game. If you do not make it by the 12th round, you simply cannot win. And you're kind of forced to at least go move 10 spaces on this track here out of the 12 rounds. And if you're not able to pay for certain resources, you'll take these negative condition tokens, which will score you those negative victory points at the end of the game. So you're trying to gather the right resources, the right symbols in your backpack to move across the board, which works really, really well. Uh, the weather conditions, uh, they're just mainly to symbolize the different days, but some of them are gonna have a unique condition requirement that you have to pay for to move across the trail. Maybe it's gonna be windy, or maybe it's going to be rainy or way too sunny, which you have to pay pay for more water or an extra fire, et cetera, et cetera. And so it kind of adds a little bit of thematic excellence to the game. Uh, you're always gonna be going for the main objective in the game too. There's one of these guys that pops up. This one says for every tree you have, you're gonna score a point. And if it's your main one, it's double in points. So if it's the one that's facing on the board alone, double points. So it's really important to get. But you can't discount the most important aspect of the game, in my opinion, the elevation chart. Moving your tent across the board is going to score you extra actions. You have to get extra actions a euro or slash worker placement game it's very very important so that's something you have to kind of push towards at least to get your fourth one and giving that extra action over anybody else is very very important one thing that particularly bothered me is the fact that it is the best area on the map in my opinion at least what i would like to see is actually different ways to gather uh, the same two actions so maybe you just start with your unique three and there's different ways on the board where you can get those extra actions so maybe if you fill your backpack instead of five points it'll give you an extra action maybe if you go across the tent space up to marker like 15 or 10 it's going to get you an extra action or maybe for the first person to get across uh, to the sequoia national park that'll score you an extra action the first person to get a set so that way you kind of forces you to like choose different locations on the board to determine what's more important now i only played a couple times uh, to be honest, I, I I got this game literally yesterday, so I sat down and we cranked it out with uh, two, three, and four players to see the differences. I didn't play the solo player mode variant. I don't think it's even in the rule book. This is a prototype after all. But uh, what I did learn is that in a two-player game and a three-player game, it's, it gets substantially more challenging for players. So in a three-player game, because there's only this limited number of spots on these areas here, you're going to be fighting for the spots even more than in a two-player game. But in a four-player game, you can place multiple actions on a singular space. I believe it's two. Um, no, I know it's two. And it, when you do that, it kind of opens up the game a little bit more. So if you want a kind of competitive, even more competitive edge to this game, you're going to be wanting to play a three-player variant. Um, the game typically is kind of Sol solitary ish right? Like most Euros, the main aspect to the game, as far as the social element goes, into where you place and if your opponents also need that space based on being the first player. What's nice about the game, too, is there's going to be this little light marker here that you can go ahead and purchase, and when you do, you'll get this little guy here, which means at the end of the round, regardless of where the turn marker is, because it'll be rotating from round to round, it will come to you. And this guy and the turn marker at the end of the game are actually worth victory points, so it's another reason to pick it up as well. So being able to go first in this game is actually very, very important, and it will give you an opportunity to pick any space that you want, and something that you should strongly, I urge you to suggest to look at. Uh, uh, what are this? Oh, these cards here? Are these cards, these field guide cards here, uh, you're gonna wanna create, create sets of five of them. What's really nice too is they have this kind of unique water card, and that is going to give you your action back, but that's going to be at a cost, and it's only for water cards. So if you kind of want to spend extra resources that they may have, nobody else has that ability uh, to purchase a specific card, it's a good opportunity to reach in and grab this card here, because it'll score you not only the symbols prior on the card, but also the set bonus if you need it. But at a certain point in time, it becomes not so much worth it to do that, because you need to have different types of cards. Now speaking of the different types of cards here, the location cards, these are really big point scores, but they're very expensive, very hefty on cost, and it can hurt you when trying to move across the trail because you always have to have the resources that you need for the trail and to feed yourself and to drink for yourself at the end of the round. And if you don't, you're gonna suffer huge penalties. It's nasty to get those condition markers. You do not wanna have them at the end of the game, but picking these big guys here will score you high-end points. 
One other unique thing about the game too is you have these little map packs. These determine the cost to travel the trail. And you're gonna be starting with a unique one for yourself. So it'll cost you a forest for the first one, a forest and a cloud for the second one, a fire for the third trail, and so on and so forth. So not only will the day or the weather markers decide what you need to pay in order to go across the trail, but you're gonna have your own individual unique map pack that will have you go across the trail as well as any symbols represented on the board. So you have to have those symbols in your backpack. So you have basically the same symbols uh, that you'll be putting into your backpack and also to use your tent. It will also be appear on the trail, which is what you're going to need in order to get to that next location. If you don't have it, well, sadly, once again, negative condition marker. But another nice thing too is if you've gathered enough extra actions, you can actually place your boot on the remove condition space. And it's any time you can do that, as many as you would like, and it'll remove those conditions at the end of the game, which is really, really important. This is all about uh, balancing and choosing like the best strategy you want to go for based on your victory conditions, getting across certain areas of the board are going to score you more points if you can get there for first. It has a bit of a set collection aspect. And of course, this game is enriched in theme. You do feel like you're moving across the trail. You feel like you're visiting the wildlife, visiting the unique locations, also traveling across the trail and dealing with any weather conditions, all while trying to gather the natural resources and have enough personal resources in order to supply yourself for the locations and to make sure that you are fed and watered throughout the game. Uh, the backpack board is also really cool. It has an unique areas where you'll put the two different types of resources, how many you can have of each. Uh, down below here is based on the locations you get. You're going to have personalized bonuses that you can get that will also score you additional victory points and you can get them all. And a full backpack will also score you a bunch of points and you can use it to move across the tent board, the most important board in the game. <laughs> um, this game has a lot going for it. This is one of those games where I feel like it meets that uh, trekking the national park, trekking, trekking the world national parks game has that feel, that style, uh, that like unique kind of like uh, one with nature feel, and it puts it into a, a deeper uh, Euro game. Uh, but the game itself is very fluid and very easy. The rule book is excellent. I went through this thing in like. 15 minutes and I understood how to play the game. Yes, I've played Euros before, so if you're newer to a Euro game, it'll be more challenging for you, but if you've played at least one or two, going through this rule book is really nice. They did an excellent job. The game felt flowy. You're placing out the weather, you're drawing a card and playing a card for a bonus type of resource or resources, and then you go into worker placement, you place on the board, all the things are very self-explanatory, all the spaces on the board represent where everything goes, uh, and there's a bunch of unique paths and choices that you can make. And then after that, it's a cleanup phase. You're gonna have to feed and water yourself, water yourself. And then you're gonna go ahead and put all the things back, take all the things back, and once again, rinse and repeat by playing another weather token. And you just do that 12 rounds. Speaking of 12 rounds, it's a pretty long game. Like, I got through the trail on the 10th round, so I had two extra rounds where I didn't have to move across the trail, which felt a little weird to me, I'm not gonna lie. I, I feel like I kind of, don't really want everyone to complete the the trail, but you kind of have to, right? I feel like it would be kind of nice if it was a race between the different boards and objectives, um, so that it's, I mean, I know the point of the game is to get to the top of the mountain, but I wanted to feel like you were like, almost gonna be able to do it, or almost gonna be able to make your tent tracker, or almost gonna be able to collect all the different sets that you needed. Um, but instead it actually kind of lets you do more, all right? It, it let me fill up my backpack, it let me get all four of the different locations, I was able to go across the Whitney portal, and I was able to get two sets of cards, and I got through the full tent track, right? Um, and I think usually with games, I prefer if I could like, I almost do certain things, or I, I, at the very end, I feel like I didn't fully do it. But this game, I felt like I was able to almost do almost everything that I wanted, which it was kind of, I guess, new for me in games. I don't know if it's necessarily a negative or a positive, but I was like, oh wow, I got a lot completed. Maybe I did really well. Maybe I played the game wrong. <laughs> but as I went through, I'm like, okay, I, I can see why. You, like, this is kind of all about going to the trail, about making it to the top of the mountain, and your objective is to like solidify yourself as much as possible, visiting as many locations as possible, and seeing as many critters, uh, trees, and birds, and all that good stuff all throughout the game. Loaded with theme, excellent artwork, excellent quality, and this is a game that a lot of Euro players are going to like. If you don't mind a longer game, if you don't mind the fact that the only way you can get actions is from one specific pathway, then this is a solid game for you. I had a lot of fun with this one. This one's gonna probably be uh, my favorite at three players because it's probably the most competitive at that rate, but with four is not bad either because you get to have a lot of that more, a lot more interaction with people and see what their different strategies and choices are. I enjoyed this game, and if you have looked at it and thought it might be fun for you, if you like Euros, this is gonna be an easy, easy pickup for you Euro lovers. I 
I, I give it my seal of approval. Yeah, it's, it's that good. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Trailblazer, the John Muir Trail by Mariposa's Games. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description. It's currently on Kickstarter, like as of today, and it will be uh, for the next, I don't know, couple weeks here, I think. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out the website, unfiltergamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button as well. It greatly helps us out here and do greatly appreciate it. And if you would, go ahead and join us on live streams every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. If you like these type of reviews, also go ahead and check out the Instagram. We're doing small reviews there. The website has super small reviews and of course, more videos here. Uh, I think that's pretty much all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to uh, trailblazing the John Muir Trail with you next time.